Hi everybody, welcome to another IDDA Mini Bytes tutorial. Today we're going to look at Dense Fly Serona and Seric and see how we set up our cases for doing dental implants. Now, the beauty of the Seric system is that we have a huge array of dental implant systems that we can incorporate in designing our Seric restorations. And a lot of times if we find that the, our implant system is not in that library, there are compatible libraries within Seric that will work for your implant system. So go back to your manufacturer and ask them which are the compatible libraries to be using in Seric. But let's see how we set up the case in Seric. So, when we start up our start screen, whether you're using Omnicam or PrimeScan, we have the exact same um, setup options that we have on the main screen. Let's go back to the administration phase. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide or we're going to determine uh, where or what restoration we're putting in the patient. So in this case, we're going to start off by selecting the implant icon that we can see over there. And then we've got a couple of choices. We can either choose a screw retained restoration, or we can choose a split abutment and crown. Okay? Now, if you're unsure about whether your screw channel will come through the singular or through the, uh, the central part of the, of the crown in the posterior crowns, always select it as a screw retained crown to start off with, and it can be changed later in the software. Now, the screw channel is irrelevant, it's the design of the crown that's important. But let's have a look. So, the first thing we'll do is select a screw retained crown. Once you've selected a screw retained crown, we've got the options of a biogeneric individual, a biogeneric copy, or a copy and mirror. So, if you want to try and copy one of the other teeth uh, anatomically, and you want to mirror it, you can choose that third option, or biogeneric copy where you can draw the outline of a previous uh, setup of a temporary tooth, for example, and copy it into the permanent. But personally, I always like to choose the biogeneric individual, as this gives me the most options for modifying the crown. Once I've decided um, which design mode I'm going to be using, then move on to designing the materials. And the most popular material is Emacs, the strongest. Um, we do have Vita Enamic as well, which are uh, blocks designed for um, definitive monolithic restorations. Uh, and we have the option of using the Desplasterona Ciconia Meso blocks for designing abutments. So in this case, we've chosen IPS Emacs abutment, and your device will come up on there, depending on which milling device you're using. Um, but even if you don't have a device, you can still continue with this um, capture of the data and, and putting everything into a, a file that we can then transport into um, uh, Seric in lab afterwards. So finally, the main, the main uh, feature that we need to be looking at is the actual time base. So there's two options if you look at my tutorial on whether you should be using a scan body or whether you should be using a time base. Um, that explains the differences between the two. But on your menu, you'll only see a time base. And the reason why is because you need to select the right time base before you tell, tell the uh, software what you're using for your final scan. So once you click on time base, we can see we've got the Bio Horizons group of implants. We've got um, the Camlog group of implants. We've got Dense Plasterona group of implants. Dense Plasterona others. MIS, and as we can see, the rest of the menus over there, Strauman and Tommen Medical. So in my case, I tend to use Ostem implants. So with the Ostem implants, I'm actually going to go back to not choose not choose Strauman, but I'm going to choose Desplasterona others. Now, when you choose Desplasterona others, there's a huge selection of different implants that you can see in there, from FX for the Ankylos type implants to Nobel Biocare implants, Continuous, continuous to ATOS, which is your, your um, generic um, OSTEM uh, scan bodies. And then we can also use third-party scan bodies like True Abutment, which is a very popular way to uh, choose very high time bases uh, and select one of the compatible libraries. So in my case, we use uh, Back to Desk, My Serona, others, and we tend to use NBA 4.5, okay, which will give me the regular... Um, platform for an OSTEM implant. Now, at this stage, we then have to select whether we're going to use a time base or a scan post. In most cases, we'll be scanning a scan post because sometimes it sits a little bit deep below the tissue and the time base won't be suitable. So once you've selected a scan post, you then go ahead and select your tooth. You press on whichever tooth. In this case, I've chosen the upper left uh, four, but let's say we were doing one on the upper right four as well. We then press on the tooth and we see the library light up. For selecting that input. And that's it folks, as simple as that. So I'm going to delete this again and show you that once you've captured your data, 
we're then able to continue capturing the upper jaw scan, which will be the soft tissue emergence profile. We capture the uh, actual scan body, and we can see the scan body in the seric that's been placed in there uh, to pick up the, um, the hex position of the implant for the ostem. We do the uh, buckle bite scan after we've done the lower, and then continue to the model and continue to the design to complete the restoration that we want to have uh, for the, as the definitive restoration. Thanks for joining us, folks. See you later.